Hey guys, just getting everything set up for the uh, brewing beer episode on Evan Does. Um, if you haven't checked out the uh, beer brewing intro that I put up uh, a week ago, go ahead and check that out first. But uh, we're going to go through everything on brew day and what to expect and uh, the equipment I have and tips and tricks. So uh, look forward to the video coming soon. Thanks. Hey guys, Evan with Evan Does. Uh, about to watch the uh, brew day of uh, brewing beer. What to expect, uh, tips and tricks I have, and what to expect on that uh, first day of brewing. Um, take out any questions that you might have. Hopefully uh, answer some questions as we go. And if you can think of anything, comment below. Like and subscribe so I can keep doing videos like this. Thanks. Enjoy. Hey everybody, it's brew day, finally. All the uh, setting up is all done, so you didn't have to watch me do that. What I am gonna do is use my non-rinse sanitizer. These do not come with the kits, so buy a no-rinse sanitizer. It's very uh, concentrated, uh, one ounce for five gallons. So I'm gonna do a fourth of an ounce, a little underneath for one gallon. And all the buckets come with gallon markers. So you can see one gallon, two gallon, three, and then it actually has a thermo thermometer that I put on there. So those are really nice for when you're, um, put them in your fermenter, the beer when we're done, so you can tell what temperature it's at. Different beers ferment better at different temperatures, depending on what kind of beer that you want. Darker the beer, the colder the temperature usually, the lighter the beer you're gonna want upstairs in the closet darker beer downstairs in the closet. Um, so I'm just going to put about a gallon in here. What we're going to do is we're going to sanitize all the equipment before we get started. I already have the water in the stock pot about right here. It's a five gallon stock pot. Got about two and a half gallons in there. The recipes will tell you to put two and a half gallons in there three gallons. Do what you want because as long as it's not going to boil over Remember, I'm adding liquid malt extract. It's going to bubble, so you just don't want to mess because you're going to have to clean it up. I'm not coming to your house. Um, so we got the muslin sack, got the uh, malt extracts, the dry and the liquid. Hops, I'm going to be uh, hops, grains. I'm going to be rolling out the grains. You just smash the bag to get them ready. They already come rolled cracked but you want to do it again make it a little fresher and so let's go ahead and do this thing I got the no rinse sanitizer in here mix it up a little bit I'm going to drop in my ladle my thermometer and you can put your uh, bubbling fermenter in there to look, so everything gets good and sanitized make sure it stays wet put the cap on now we're not going to be putting anything in the bucket for probably an hour and a half, two hours, so it only needs 10 minutes to sanitize everything. So I'm just going to leave it in there for about 10 minutes and then we know everything's going to be good and sanitized. Right before we put it in the bucket and cool it down, I'm going to sanitize my yeast packet too because you want to cut it and uh, I'm actually going to sanitize the scissors too because when you cut the yeast you want that scissors to be totally clean so you don't infect your batch. Last thing you want to do is infect your batch at the very end and then you find out in two weeks it's bad tasting beer or worse in a month. So water's boiling. Once this gets to once this gets to about 120, 130 degrees, then we can add in our uh, crushed malt and then we've got to steep it for 20 minutes and then we actually take it out. Now you have wort. And that wort is what we're gonna be adding the rest of the ingredients to over 55 minutes. I have the instructions, they're pretty clear, but I'm not gonna look at those too much since I have done this a, a, a lot. I'll kind of re reference it a little. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a temperature of the water and see if we can add the, uh, the malt yet. Get my thermometer out been in there for over 10 minutes. It's real important with the thermometer to get the right 
150 to 160, we're going to add in the grains. Not quite there yet. Water's ready. Everything's set to go. So for the grains, we're going to tie the end of the muslin sack because it's open at the one end. Crush malt. I'll just take my liquid malt extract and I'll crush it again. Beat up on it a little bit because you're trying to release fresh aromas because they've been crushed in a bag for a while in the box. And so they just say to roll it or smack it a bunch again so you can get some freshness out of that. And I had my scissors that's in there. So I'll cut right at the top. Careful. Muslin sack. It's going to get a little dusty. Get it all the way in there so it won't make a mess. There you go. Tie up the end. And there you go. There's our uh, bolt. And so you don't want it to touch the bottom. You want it to be up off the bottom a little bit. So I always just tie it off on my handle loosely. So it's not touching the bottom because if it's touching the bottom, could burn the sack. And then we want to keep stirring it every now and then so the temperature stays uniform in there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to steep those hops for about 20 minutes here. And uh, we're not going to let it get too hot. You want to pull it if it gets to 180 or more than that. Once you get to 200, 220, we're gonna see a boil, and then that's when we're gonna start adding in our other ingredients. So that's what it's looking at with the hop sack suspended in there. It's gonna start getting a little cloudy and the darker the grains you're steeping, the darker that mix is going to be. Until it gets up to temperature, then we can call it a wart. So, about 18 more minutes and we'll take a look. Alright, we've had it going for about 5 minutes. Uh, still holding at about 160. Uh, now's a good time to put your liquid malt extract in hot water. Just set the can in there. That's a tip because the warmer this is, the easier it's going to pour into there, and then you don't have to get it all at the, with the spatula. Because this is the first thing we're going to be adding after this is soaking for 20 minutes. We're going to take that out, it's going to be really hot, and then we're going to add in our liquid malt extract. Then it's wart, and then uh, we have 55 minutes from there. Alright, so it's been boiling for about 10 minutes so far, you can tell the color is getting a little darker. Oops. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my liquid malt extract in warm water. So as it warms up, it'll be easier to pour in because once this boils, then we add in the liquid malt extract, you want this to pour out real easy. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up a sink and let that in there to warm up a little bit. About 10 more minutes and we'll get it started. Okay, so it's been steeping for 20 minutes. As you can tell, it's gotten a little pretty golden. Um, we are making a Kolsch beer. It's a little bit of a lighter beer. It's summertime here, so uh, well, something a little bit lighter to be drinking. So we're gonna go ahead and take the muslin sack out. You just untie it, and again, it is hot. We're gonna let it drip for a little bit. 
and we're going to actually turn up the temperature because now we want it hotter than 160. 100, 150 to 165 is what you want for your steeping and 200 to 220 is what you want. We want to bring it to a full boil because our boil for the warp doesn't start until it gets to that temperature. Then we add in our liquid malt extract and the timer starts and there we go. So I'll go ahead and take this and put it in the sink. And again, it's gonna be hot. Give that a stir. And we're at about 175 right now. Take about five, six minutes to get it up to temp. And then we'll put in our uh, liquid malt extract. All right, so we have a rolling boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add our liquid malt extract, our LME. And one thing that's very important, we'll take out the thermometer. We're going to pour this in and stir at the same time because we don't want this to rest on the bottom and caramelize, it's gonna burn. And you don't want it to burn. It's gonna make for some not so good beer. So I'll stir it, pour it in evenly. Again, make sure, try to not the lip rest on the bottom. You're gonna get some bubbling. And this is why you don't wanna fill your stock pot to the top because it might boil over the top and this stuff gets sticky when it dries. I am speaking from experience, so. Now, if you want to get the rest of the liquid malt extract out of there, this was warm, so it came out pretty good, but we still have some in there. I just pour a little bit of hot water and it's hot. Swirl it around, pour it out. That way you can get a lot. You don't leave anything in there. Now, if you guys could smell this smell right now, it is fantastic. This house is gonna smell wonderful for hours. With just that creamy, malty, Oh, so good. You know, if you go into a brewery, that smell that you smell, it's exactly that in your own house. Because you know what? You're a brewery now. You're making beer. So stir that up good. Now, once this starts to boil again, which should be pretty soon, if not right away, I'm going to go ahead and add our hops. And guess what? We have wort now. We're cooking beer. It's not just a big tea bag. So I have two hops, I have Williamette hops, and I got Saz hops. I'm going to be adding the Williamette first, because that's what the ingredients ask for. I'm going to add this in, it boils for 30 minutes, and I'm going to add another bag of hops, another 10 minutes, and then I'm going to put in two bags of uh, dried malt extracts, and uh, so we're on our way to the boil. 55 minutes so we can keep track and uh, let's go ahead and toss these in. So hops, especially these pellet hops, they're dry, let me get my scissors. Pellet hops are a dried hop. Boop, 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 boop. They kind of look funky, kind of like a, um, what would you call that, a uh, rabbit food? something like that but when you pour them in it actually breaks up very quick and you do you just pour them right into the pot and again if you could smell that right now when you put in the hops it's instant and we get a little bit more of an aggressive boil real quick turn that down so it doesn't get too hot and i'm just gonna keep an eye on the temperature make sure it doesn't boil over you want it at about 200, 210. And we're right at 205, about. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep stirring this on and off for the next uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna add in the second bag of hops. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Time to add our second bag of hops per the instructions. These are gonna be Saz hops. And again, you open them up and you just pour them on in. Give it a stir. Hops 
fall apart right away. And I've been stirring it every three to five minutes during the boil. All right, another 20 minutes and I'm gonna add the dried malt extract. I'll be back. All right guys, almost there, five minutes to go. So now it's time to add in two bags of dry malt extract. So the reason I think we're adding these at the end is because, again, it's a Kolsch beer, it's lighter in color. As you can see, it's kind of a lighter wort. I mean, if I was making a stout or a porter, it would be dark. So as you add these in, you're gonna stir again. You don't want it to congregate on the bottom of the pan. So one at a time, get the stir on. And hops, we didn't discuss why you add them in at different times. I added in the hops in the beginning. Those are more of a flavor hops. In the middle is more of a bittering hop. And at the end, you add for more of an aroma. So it's called an aroma hop. Um, they're all going to add a little bit to each category, but if you add a lot of hops at the end, it's basically just for that aroma. Um, if you add them in the beginning, again, it's going to be boiling the whole time with your wort, so you're going to get a lot more of the flavor, not as much of the aroma from that hop. But that's why you can add multiple levels of flavor and complexities with beer, especially if it's a few different types of hops added in at different times. So here's our second bag of dried malt extract. And these, if they get wet, if steam gets into the bag, it almost like chunks up and crystallizes on there. So that's why you gotta try pouring kind of quick. This is a Bavarian wheat. So here we go, get the stir on. And after this, it's just five minutes, and I'm going to be bringing it to a secret location, aka my basement, and uh, cooling down the wart. Now, I explained in the first video I made that you can either cool it down in your sink filled full of ice, and that will work. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour, I've noticed, when I've done that. Now I've bought a copper coil wart chiller. The only spigot I have besides a hose that has a thread on it would be in my basement, my mop sink. So you can either go outside with it. You just want to make sure once you get it down below 165, anything that enters the beer isn't going to be killed off at that point. So right now it's... 200 degrees, anything that goes in there. I'm not too worried about sanitation at this time. When I put the coil in there, I already have it sanitized downstairs. I brought my sanitation bucket down there, put my coils in it for 10 minutes. So that's already been done. Um, we got about two minutes left and we'll go ahead and bring this downstairs and start cooling it down. Once it gets to 70 to 80 degrees and we can throw in the yeast put it in a bucket and put it in the closet and check on it in a few weeks. It's a good time to mention also that the more wort that you boil at a time, it's less water you have to add in at the end. Because this is a five gallon beer recipe. There's two and a half gallon recipes, there's one gallon recipes. I'm making five gallons, so if I boil three, then I need to add two more, which is kind of nice because you're adding cold water, so it's going to be to bring the temperature down faster. So you can definitely uh, think of that too. I'll get it down to about 80, 90. I'll put it in a pail, and then I'll put it between the pail and the pot and aerate it between the two, and that'll cool it down fast also. So just keep that in mind. Um, the less amount in here, more water you add later. Um, this is just going to be more concentrated. Alright guys, I made it. Remember this is hot and once you cool it down you want to keep your face away from the top of that 
No sneezing, no coughing into there. My sanitized coil, got it hooked up to the sink. I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. The water, make sure there's no leaks in my system anywhere. That looks good. These coils are gonna get super cold. Once I put it in, it's gonna be very hot water coming in through that. I wanna keep my thermometer in there so I can keep track of how fast it's cooling down. And again, this hose is getting very hot I'm holding on to because that's why it's copper. It's very good at waking the heat off, pulling it into the coil. So, come a little closer there. See it. This will take about not as quick as you think, about five to six minutes. It should be cooled down. And then I'm gonna put it into the bucket. I already have down here. Have my airlock filled with sanitation solution and it's cleaned out and emptied. So once this gets down to temp, I'm gonna put it right into my bucket. I'm going to swish it between the two and get some air in there because the yeast needs that air and it needs the sugar in the wort to create alcohol. That's the byproduct. That's what we're doing here. So I'll leave this go for about another three to four minutes and I'll switch it up. All right, everybody. We're at less than 100 degrees right now. We're at about... We're at about 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill this bucket. It's sanitized, so that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put some water in this bucket because we know we don't have five gallons yet. I'm going to put some cold water in a bucket so that way it'll bring it down to temp and we'll get the five gallons that I need. Turn off the water. Water. For a second, put that in the sink. We'll rinse that off when we're done. Set this down here. Try to get all the air in there so then it won't spill out. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the beer into the bucket. Remember we have the thermostat on the edge of the bucket. So five gallons is what we're shooting for. And eyeballing it. I got pretty close. Just have to put a little bit more water in there. close to five gallons I can get. Right there. Okay, so now time to aerate. Bucket into bucket. Now we're gonna go back and forth. Try not to breathe in there, try not to get anything in there. We're just trying to incorporate some air into the ward for the yeast to eat. And I'll do this four or five times. And notice I'm not pouring it all into one or the other because I already did my weightlifting today. And when you're pouring in for the last time, make sure to leave a little bit in the pan because don't forget about your hydrometer. You want a reading of your original gravity so you can keep track of how well your beer is going. So I'll leave some in there. Have my hydrometer. Remember you drop this thing in. Gives you a reading. So let's see how good I can do at pouring it in here without spilling all over the place. Cross your fingers. Oh, one second made. Oh, spoke too soon. Alright, so we're going to let this cool for a little bit. Press goes in here. 
Guess what? There's one last thing to do. Yeast. Do not forget your yeast. I've done that before. Next day I'm thinking, no bubbles coming out of the airlock. Look in the box, there's my yeast. Whoops. Sanitize scissors, cut off the top of your yeast. Open it up, sprinkle it in. You want to put it in after you aerate. You can put it on top of the bubbles. Our temperature's at 80, so that's fine. 70 to 80 degrees is when you want to put the yeast on. So look at that, beautiful right on top. We're gonna seal our lid. We're not gonna open this up for another two weeks. And just like that, uh, you can see that airlock when you push down how the bubbles come. So that's gonna be doing that even tomorrow if I come check on it. It's constantly gonna be pushing air out of there that the yeast is creating. So a hydrometer, you take this, you drop in this, you give it a little spin. There's a little too much in there. Give it a little spin and bob up and down. Take your reading and see what your original gravity is. Let's see, numbers on the side. And we're at about one one point zero five five. The original gravity on the recipe to go for. Let's see what we have here. OG is usually on the top. I'm sorry. Okay. So original gravity should be 1.42 and 1.046. And we're at about 1.45. So we hit the nail on the head there. We know our original gravity is good. We're going to go ahead and put this upstairs in a closet that doesn't get any sunlight because this is going to brew a little bit warmer. You want it about 70, 75 degrees uh, for this yeast. Um, different yeast strains, different flavor profiles also. You can mix up your hops, you can mix up your yeasts, you can do a dry yeast like I did, you can do a liquid yeast, you can pitch your yeast before you put it in, makes it more viable. I've always had good luck just doing what I did and sprinkling it on top. So that's it for brewing beer, day one. I'm going to check back in two weeks and I'll give some update videos, but I'll go ahead and throw this one up and I'll uh, post the uh, videos of the uh, two week and the one month and bottling day. That's a whole nother adventure. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to click like and subscribe. And if you like what you see here, I will uh, brew another batch. Maybe next time we'll go with something a little darker, uh, a porter or a um, double IPA. You let me know in the comments below what kind of beer you want to see or if you want any additional add-ins like chocolate dips or uh, cinnamon. Sometimes you make a um, malt extract. You can add in some boosters and some different malts. So just let me know. All right, thanks, guys. This is the fermentation airlock, and it is just bubbling away. So I know my yeast is active and doing its thing. Very good.